at this time. I'd like to turn things over to Mr. Dave Schaller. Please go ahead, sir. Thanks, Dave. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Strike Force Melendez versus Masvidal Media Conference call. Today, I'm filling in for Strike Force publicist Ryan Grab, who's traveling. He'll still be your point of contact for this event. Strike Force Melendez versus Masvidal takes place on Saturday, December 17th, from the Valley View Casino Center in San Diego, California. There are still tickets available, and the action will be broadcast as a part of a huge night of combat sports on Showtime. 10.30 p.m. Eastern and Pacific. Today on the call, we are joined by the main and co-main participants from next weekend's card, Strike Force lightweight champion Gilbert Melendez and his opponent, Jorge Masvidal, as well as Strike Force women's featherweight champion, Chris Cyborg Santos, and her challenger, Hiroko Yamanaka. Also on the call is the man I'll turn it over to right now, Strike Force CEO, Scott Coker. Scott? Thanks, Dave. I'd like to thank the members of the media for being on the call today. Uh, I'm excited to be back in San Diego for our second championship strike force event on Showtime uh, this year. Uh, I'd like to thank the fighters, Gilbert, and everybody on the call, as well as our broadcast partner, Showtime Television, uh, and, and new uh, vice president or president, actually, Mr. Steven Espinoza. Wish all the fighters good luck. We look forward to another amazing fight card uh, on Showtime uh, on December 17th in San Diego. And with that, Dave, I'll just pass it back to you. Thanks, Scott. And Abe, let's go ahead and open it up for questions. Before we do that, I just want to let everybody know that Hiroko Yamanaka will be translated today by Isamu Hiroyochu, and also on the call for uh, Cyborg Santos is a translator, and that is Cosmo, so he joins us again today. Abe, let's go ahead and open it up for questions. All right, great. Thank you very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to queue up to ask a question at this time, please press star, then one on your touchstone telephone keypad. Again, that's star one to queue up to ask a question at this time. And we will pause for a moment to assemble our question roster. All right, there's currently no questions in the queue, but once again, ladies and gentlemen, that's star one to queue up to ask your question at this time. Dave, let's go ahead with uh, Mike Chiapetta from MMAfighting.com. All right, thank you very much. Mike, your line's open. Hey, uh, question for Gilbert, please. Uh, in the past, you've spoken of, of wanting to fight, you know, big names. Um, Eddie Alvarez, the name you mentioned when he was a Bellator champion. You've spoken of interest in fighting UFC guys as well. So I'm curious, how did you feel about this matchup with Jorge when it was offered to you? Um, uh, you know, I was excited about this fight. I think Jorge is um, a tough fighter. I don't think he's, like, you know, the most popular but he's underrated, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good challenge, and he's someone that's been in the circuit for a long time. I was outside the UFC, so I kind of anticipated fighting him, you know, even a couple of years ago, so, uh, yeah, I'm pumped on it, man. It's a good challenge. It's be a good show. And, you know, he was fighting at welterweight for a little while, then his last two fights have been at lightweight now. Uh, what are your impressions of his last two performances, you know, the wins over Nunes and, and Billy Evangelista? Yeah, he looked really good um, against KJ. You know, I mean, he looked good, um, you know, really good tricks, looked in good shape, looked like he's finally adapted to the weight class. Um, yeah, you know, he's a complete MMA fighter. He's, uh, he looked good. Uh, Jorge, what does this opportunity mean to you to have this chance to win a major championship? Uh, it means a lot, man. Fighting, uh, it's not just a championship, fighting a top-ranked guy. It's either number one or number two in most people's opinion. That's... That's what really matters to me about. I could really care less for it, you know. Why is that? Because uh, sometimes you can fight a, a guy that has a belt that's not a top ranked guy that could be a, a, a scrub or something, you know. But I'm actually fighting one of the top lightweights in the world, and that's that's what really means something to me. Gotcha. Um, where do you see your advantages in this fight, Jorge? Uh, man, wherever the fight goes, I'm ready, man. That's why I see my advantage, man. You know, on the feet, on the ground. I'm just, I just want to get in there and fight, man. Um, thanks, guys. And a question for Scott real quick. I'm sure lots of people are wondering, is there, is there anything you could say about the status of the Showtime Strike Force deal? I, I, you know, I know it's been talked about a, a, an event in January now. Is the extension official? Um, you know what? There's nothing to announce, but uh, I'm optimistic at this point. Do you have a sort of a time frame on when we might hear something official? You know what? That's uh, that's something that um, you know we'll have to just wait and see. But um, you know, I, I think that things are going well, and um, you know, I think we'll have something to announce shortly. But right now, you know, I have nothing official to to announce. Okay, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. All right, great. Thank you very much. Well, now moving on, we'll take a question from Richard Hunter with KLLI Radio Dallas. 
Yes, hi. A uh, question for Gilbert. Uh, Gilbert, you know, you're obviously mentioned regularly as one of the best lightweights in the world. Uh, it was one thing when uh, Strike Force and UFC were separate companies, but uh, uh, now that they are owned by the same parent company, how personally involved have you been with your team, with your management, about the idea of possibly going to the UFC at some point now that we're seeing uh, fighters like Nick Diaz do that, or do you have to per- you know, intentionally separate yourself from that to, to focus on your uh, Strike Force title defense? Um, we've, uh, we've talked about it a little bit, um, you know, before the big buzz about me jumping over the UFC and before, you know, Dana White started mentioning my name and, and, you know, the whole, uh, you know, the whole, um, you know, rumors started going on, uh, my contract was already signed to fight Jorge, you know, and, uh, you know, and I, and maybe it was even, you know, five weeks before that, a couple of weeks before that. And, uh, you know, you get a little excited hearing all that stuff, but, um, you know, that was kind of just my focus as soon as we, you know, we signed that deal. But, um, you know, you know, it's obvious it's something we, we've, we've been talking about. And I think it's inevitable. You know, um, you know, I think some of the, you know, the top fighters need to go to the UFC, you know, and I'm one of those guys. So um, it, it's in the works. It's, you know, th- things that have been talked about. Um, am I in it all the time? Am I the one talking to them? No, but um, there's some dialogue going on. And, um, I mean, the goal is to be the UFC champ at the end of the day. You know, the goal is to be number one in the world at the end of the day. And, you know, the only way to do that is by getting the UFC title. So, uh, yeah. So you use the word inevitable. You feel like your move to the UFC is eventually inevitable. I would say. Mm-hmm. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you very much. Well, once again, ladies and gentlemen, that's star one to queue up to ask a question. Again, that's star one. And we'll now move on to Damon Martin with MMAWeekly.com. Oh, yeah, first question is for Chris Cyborg. Uh, Chris, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, your future in the women's division and even a move to 135 pounds. Uh, I know your focus is on this title fight, but can you can you talk to us about that? I mean, is that a serious move? Is that something you're considering? Damon, can you repeat that question one more time for me, bud? Sure, sure. Uh, questions for Chris Cyborg. I know there's been a lot of talk about you moving possibly to 135 pounds, and I know your focus is on this title fight, but is that something realistic? Is that something you're considering, a move to 135 pounds eventually? Cosmo, did you hear that question? Abe, do we have in trouble with, uh, with Cyborg's line? Yeah, it looks like they just dropped. We'll connect them just one moment. All right, Damon, if you have another question, we'll get uh, Cyborg back on the line. If you have another question for anybody else on the call, we'll happily take it at this time. Sure. A uh, question for Jorge. You know, you kind of mentioned it earlier about, you know, the magnitude of a fight like this. I mean, does the fact that, you know, there's, there's you know, a lot of talk about Gilbert, you know, maybe moving to the UFC. There was talk about it even before this fight. I mean, does it serve as a, 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 as a distraction? Are you kind of excited about the fact that, you know, people are, you know, hyped so hyped around Gilbert that if you beat him, you know, this is such a big step for you? Uh, man, to me, it don't really matter, man, what people say about him or anything. I just, I just want to fight him. I know he's a solid fighter, and that, that's all that matters to me, you know. And um, that's it, really. I mean, to me, it's just another fight, you know. It's, it's train hard, and that's it. You know, train, train long because it's five rounds. That's the only difference, and that's it, man. Go in there and do my job. And one quick one for Gilbert. You know, Gilbert, I know, you know, obviously all the talk about, you know, the UFC and, and you know, Frankie Edgar, Ben Henderson, whoever, whatever. But does that does it serve as a distraction for you uh, going into this fight, or, or do you have to block all that out, or, or do you take that as motivation? Exactly, man. The, the last thing you said, man, the motivation. Um, you know, you get motivated when you're the underdog, or, you know, you get motivated when there's a lot of hype. You know, um, a lot of people have been – you know, talking nonsense that like, you know, Jorge is, he's a, like, he's no good. You're going to run right by him. And, you know, that talk kind of bothers me because, you know, some people are ignorant. You don't really, you don't follow the game that much. If you don't fight in the UFC, they think you're, you're no good. So uh, what's been the challenge for me is, um, you know, motivating myself and, uh, and staying, you know, staying motivated and pumping myself up. So this, this means a lot to myself, you know, just, you know, not to fans, not to anybody. This is just this fight's for me, just to prove that I can defend my throne and and uh, you know I'm I'm the big favorite here, and I have a tough guy who's underrated, and I got to really come through. So that's what's been motivating me, and um, I think if I can get past this and and look real good, I think it'll 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 mean a lot to me more than I think it'll will to other anyone else. You know. 
Excellent. And then, uh, then for Cyborg, again, just to kind of repeat that earlier question, uh, you know, with, with all the talk about, you know, you being back in strike force in this title fight, but are you, you know, there's been a lot of talk about you moving to 135 pounds. Uh, is that something you're considering? Is that something you're serious about moving to eventually? Do you think you're going to move to 135 pounds? No, I think it's going to be a hard job, but I'm going to try. Uh, she's saying that uh, she's gonna it's gonna be difficult, but uh, she's gonna try to make the move if it's gonna be uh, more work for her there. Is, is that something to consider after this fight, or is that something she's already you know basically after this fight that's gonna be what she tries? No, eu eu vou quero lutar as duas categorias. Só que se eu tiver com 135, eu posso lutar mais. She's saying that she wants to try to do both categories if possible. Um, but she knows there'll be more uh, opportunities at 135. Excellent. Thanks very much. You're welcome. All right, great. Thank you very much. Well, now moving on, we'll take a question from Bob Emanuel. Scripps Howard. Howard, if you defeat Jorge, do you think the plan is, you know, the transition to the UFC and fight the Edgar Henderson winner? Do you think that's what's next for you? I, you know, I, I can't, I can't even confirm that or anything like that. You know, again, man, the, the goal is to be, you know, number one in the world. You know what I mean, if you know, I have to beat Jorge. If I have to beat someone else, I have to beat five more people before that. Then, uh, then so be it. But, um, but, you know, the sooner the better. You know, I think I deserve that, deserve the, the chance at that UFC title for, you know, since now. You know, so, uh, so if I can get it as soon as possible, that'd be great. Uh, if not, you know, if I have to keep winning and keep working hard, and you know, I feel like I've been constantly proving myself in this MMA uh, industry, then um, then so be it, you know. Uh, it's inevitable, dude. I'm, I'm coming for that spot. But, uh, yeah, the, the better would be nice. Who are the guys that you'd most like to fight if you had your choice of anybody? You know, what one or two guys would you say, this would be my ideal next opponent? Um, I mean, I... I I don't. I, it doesn't. I don't really. It doesn't really matter. I mean, of course, you'd like to fight someone who would just pop to their back and sit down and let him beat me and let me beat them up. I mean, uh, that'd be cool. But uh, but realistically, I think uh, whoever, whoever the champ is, you know what I mean. Whoever the champ is up there, or whoever's whoever's next in line, you know, it's, it's if it's gonna take me three fights, I want the number three guy, the number two guy, then the number one guy. If it's gonna take me two fights, give me the number two guy and then the number one guy. You know, uh, it doesn't really matter who, to be honest. I don't really like have a particular person that I want to fight you know I just want to challenge myself I want to put on some good shows and you know I want to fight everybody to prove that I'm number one that's it man so I, I want to find out myself if I'm number one I really do all right thank you I appreciate it good luck thanks great thank you very much now we're going to go to Nicholas King with CKNW oh hey guys how's it going thanks for having me um, Jorge, I just, uh, actually, I want to ask, uh, ask, uh, all you guys a bunch of questions here, or a few questions rather, but Jorge, I know you said, uh, this fight is just another fight for you, but do you really believe that? I mean, you know, Gilbert's giving you props here. Gilbert's an awesome fighter. I think you're a great fighter. And I think this is, um, you know, more than just an, uh, another fight for you. You know, do you think you could, you could even use this to get to, uh, the UFC? And is that something you'd want to do? Um, me. When I say just another fight, it's not like I'm I'm dissing my opponent skill wise or anything. I'm just saying I'm I, I don't get caught up in that it's a title and it's the main event and showtime and all like that. It's just at the end of the day, no matter what's on stake, it's just a fight, man. It's not like you know, Gil has a gun and I'm going in there empty handed. It's just another fight. That's exactly what I mean. And um, I, whatever happens after happens after. But my focus right now is is a uh, strike force. Obviously, I like to go to UFC or wherever I'm going to make the most money, that's that's my ultimate goal, and I think you see that, so definitely I'd be uh, happy in, in my plans, you know? Well, I got to say, I like uh, I like your guys' attitudes here. I think this is really going to be an awesome fight. Um, uh, Gilbert, what do you think, what are some of the things you've been working on um, for this fight versus Jorge? Have you been working on anything new? Because I think, I think this is going to be a great stand-up battle, to be honest with you guys. Yeah, I think I'm going to pull guard. No, I'm, and no, I don't plan. You know, um, you know, I don't. I don't plan on blowing the whistle on myself right now. I've been training really hard for Jorge. You know, he has. Uh, he 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 poses a he poses a lot of threats on the feet. You know, he's a well-rounded fighter. And uh, yeah, I agree. I think he could take out a lot of guys in the UFC right now. And um, you know, and I don't. I don't. I, you know, I, I guess I don't really want to talk game plan, bro. I'm just gonna go out there and show it. But uh, you know, like him, I'm ready for every scenario. You know, I've been ready for scenario every scenario for a long time. 
So, uh, I, you know, I'm looking forward to just testing myself out there and putting on a good show. I think we both like to fight, and that's what's going to make a good fight. Oh, yeah, I, t- I totally agree. I just, uh, okay, just on, on one of those things that you just mentioned about you being ready, um, I know, you know, you want to get to the UFC as soon as possible, obviously fight for that belt, but, you know, both both of those things would obviously be good, but would you be happy just getting to the UFC and fighting and putting on good shows, or are you, like, really intent? I mean, yeah, you're intent on getting that belt shot right away, but, you know? Yeah, like, are you? Yeah, like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, it's, it's, this is, uh, it's, it, you know, I, I love what I do, man. This is fun for me. I get paid for this. It's unbelievable. You know what I mean? This is this is great. You know, I'm, I'm very content, you know, and, uh, you know, fighting in the UFC, it's, you know, I, I'm, since the UFC's taken over and every, I've been able to brand myself a lot more. You know, my Twitter followers are, uh, you know, my name's around a lot more. And uh, that's the most important thing is to have life outside the cage after the after your career is over. And, uh, and that's what the UFC can do for you, really help you brand yourself. And, uh, you know, that's what I look forward to in the UFC. Of course, challenging myself and, uh, and you know, and, you know I, I, I enjoy what I do, man. And uh, I'm okay with losing, too. You know, I, I train my butt off. You know, I turn my butt off hard, which, you know, makes me real content if I walk in there and I just perform to the best of my ability, then I can live with myself, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. But, uh, but yeah, man, I, I love what I do. I want, I want to find out if I'm number one, you know, uh, but I'll continue to fight. I'll continue to battle till I can't battle no more. Right. I love that statement, man. I got to find out if I'm number one. That's, uh, that's just awesome. Man. Okay, Scott. I got one question for you, man. Uh, there's so many places for MMA, MMA fighters to work these days. What is uh, how is Strike Force gonna be different? You know, in 2012, what's gonna be different? What's gonna, you know, give me something. Well, I think you know, uh, in the history of Strike Force, uh, since the um, relationship with Showtime was developed, you know, we've put on, I think, some of the best fights, you know, uh, in the history of MMA, and um, you know, we've done our part to grow the sport. And, and that's going to continue. You know, there's still a lot of great fighters on the roster, and uh, we're going to keep building these fighters. We're going to keep uh, putting on great fights. And so, to me, um, that that's not going to change. And so, everybody can tune in to Showtime and watch it in 2012, and uh, we're going to put on some amazing, amazing fights. All right, great. Thank you very much. Now, moving on, we'll go to Damon Martin with MMAWeekly.com. Uh, yeah, real quick, real quick questions for uh, Hiroko Yamanaka. Uh, there's so much hype, you know, in the women's division for for Chris Cyborg. Do you feel in any way that you're you're being overlooked going into this fight? えっと、ひろこ選手に質問です。え、今回の試合に関して、えっと、サイボーグ選手の方にすごく注目が集まっているんですけど、そのことに関してちょっと自分が、あの、置いていかれているというか、注目されていないというような感じはありますか? Um, well, I don't feel like I'm overlooked or anything. I, you know, only thing I have in my mind is to win this fight. That's all. When you look at Chris Cyborg, she's been such a dominant champion and so overwhelming in her fights, but do you feel like the experience you had, you're one of the most experienced opponents she's ever faced. Do you think that that's going to play a big factor in this fight, the fact that you have had so many fights and obviously had so many great performances in the past? Dave, do we still have them on the line? Yes, they're still connected. はい。デイメン、ワンモアタイムオンザクエスチョン。シュー、シュー。フォーフォーヤナナカ。で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で
you know, maybe talking about moving to 135. Is there still going to be a focus of bringing in more women for 145, or can you kind of give us an idea of what the future is for that division? Yeah, right now we're, you know, we're committed to running those two weight classes. Uh, keep in mind, it's done very well. Uh, the female fighting uh, on Showtime has done very well ratings-wise, uh, even outdrawing some of the, uh, the male fights. And um, we're, we're committed to running those two divisions. So, you know, we're going to continue uh, scouring the planet looking for the top girls. And, uh, and I think we've done that. So, um, you know, we're going to keep doing it, and, and, there, and there'll be more fights for Chris in the future at 135 or 145. Excellent. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Now moving on, we'll go to Brendan Conlon with Rebellion Media. Uh, yeah, hi. How's it going? Uh, the first question is for uh, Cyborg. Um, it's been a while since you fought. I'm just curious if you can share uh, some ways you feel you've improved um, since it's been more than a year. Você fala que você tem mais de um ano que não luta. Em que coisa você é melhorado? Ah, eu acho que eu acredito que eu melhorei meu jiu-jitsu, eu treinei muito e competi também. Eu acredito que eu melhorei em tudo, em tudo que eu que eu estou treinando, em boxe, jiu-jitsu, muay thai. Eu me dediquei cada vez mais para melhorar meu jogo com MMA. Okay. She feels like she's gotten better at jiu-jitsu. She's been staying um, competitive in that aspect, um, her working on boxing and working on her striking, and she feels like she's uh, better rounded, more well-rounded as a fighter now than she was before. Okay, and then uh, for her opponent, uh, for uh, Miss Yamanaka, uh, since you're, you'll be making your Strike Force debut, what, what do you want fans to know about you? Uh, since a lot of American fans may not be familiar with what you've accomplished. まあ、まあ、アメリカのファンに知っておいてもらいたい、あなたについて知っておいてもらいたいことありますか。あ、そうですね。今回の試合でもちろんもう負けるつもりないし、勝つつもりで行くんで、ベルトを持って帰りたい
you know, Jake, Jake was like, a, I think, a pioneer in ground and pound with the elbows. So his elbows has been something I've always had in the back of my mind or even when I'm training and I, I'm, you know, I'm packing guard or I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in, I'm in the ground and pound or working ground and pound. Like in my mind, I'm always like, man, I can elbow this guy right now. So it's, it's nothing that like, I just never like, I just cause strike force didn't do elbows for a while. I just didn't like rule it out. You know, it's something I've always added in my arsenal and, and, uh, and love to work on. And, and, and it's something that's come naturally to me with my ground and pound. So, uh, you know, I'm happy that it's there. Because I think, you know, elbows, uh, you know, elbows are real effective, you know. And, you know, sometimes they cut people and they end fights, you know, when they shouldn't be ended and where no one's really hurt. But uh, I think when I throw elbows, I throw them with bad intentions. And, you know, I showed I could I could end a, a fight with some elbows. So, um, yeah, I like the elbows. You know, I like those rules in there, you know. Um, you know, I mean, I used to fight in Hawaii and I fought in pride, you know, foot stomps, knees to the head. I mean, you know, uh, you know, as a fighter, it's fun to do that stuff, you know, probably not the best for our longevity in the sport, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty old school. I like to do all that stuff. I think it's pretty cool. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy with the elbows. I'm, I'm really happy about that. And I love those. I love the unified rules and it's, it's, it's great. It's fun to have those. Uh, do you expect Jorge to be better prepared, uh, given that Kawajiri was coming over from Japan where he wouldn't have had to deal with something like that? Um, you know, I think Jorge, this is, Jorge is a, you know, with, any of his losses sometimes, you know, he's, he's probably wasn't as motivated sometimes, you know. Um, you know, this is a fight where Jorge, I'm pretty sure, is pretty damn motivated. You know, this is an opportunity of his life to really make a, a statement and a name for himself. So, uh, so I think he's going to be, I think he's going to be really ready. You know what I mean? And I think he's, yeah, of course. I'm, I'm, I hope that I'm, I'm pretty, I'm anticipating he did everything he can do to get ready. You know, and that means looking at tape, looking at homework and, and uh, doing his homework and everything as well. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure he, uh, I'm sure you saw what I did in my last fight and took it into strong consideration, you know, as well as that I look at his fight plenty of times. All right, thanks, Gil. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. All right, thank you very much. Well, once again, ladies and gentlemen, that's star one to queue up to ask a question. Again, that's star one at this time, and we'll move on to Richard Hunter with fifthround.com. Hello? Hey, that was uh, Tom Go from fifthround.com. Tom, is that you? Yeah, that's me. How you doing? Good, good. Go ahead. Gilbert, uh, earlier this year you signed a multi-year contract extension with Strikeforce. I was wondering if you knew if there's any verbiage in there that allows Zufa to avoid that deal out and sign you to a new uh, UFC contract. You know, I can't confirm that, man. I don't know. I don't. I didn't. You know, these these contracts. It's like they're 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 meant for you for us fighters not to understand them. You know, <laughs> that's what these contracts are about. <laughs> so you know, uh, I have a you know I have a lawyer, and um, you know, and and hopefully these guys who make the deals can 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 get it can get it uh, can get it going, and um, and, uh, and you know that's all I can really say about that. But you know, um, I do have a, a multi fight with uh, Strike Force. Um, and uh, you know I'm happy with Strike Force. I'm happy with everything. I'm very grateful for it. And uh, you know, but but I don't know what can exactly be done. But um, but I'm sure uh, you know I'm sure you know these guys have the power to do whatever they want. You know. All right. um, Scott, if I could pose that question to you, since Gilbert wasn't exactly for sure, um, do you know anything about that? Well, you know, obviously we we can't get into any type of, you know, legal verbiage of what's in the contract, what's not. Those are all, you know, bound by confidentiality provisions. But, uh, you know, what I can say is that, you know, Gilbert is a great champion. I personally believe he's the number one fighter in the world. And, uh, you know what, uh, I think that, uh, you know, Jorge Masvidal is where his mindset is and where his focus is, and, and, and that's where I think it should stay. And, and uh, you know, to me, what happens after this fight will depend on the outcome of the fight. So... Uh, let's just focus on the event. Okay, and if I can just follow up one more time with Gilbert, um, if you were, <clears throat> excuse me, if you were able to post a convincing win against uh, Jorge, would you be disappointed if the UFC didn't try to transition you over? You know what, man? I, I, I just, I just don't. You know, of course, you know, you, you want to be there, and I'm not trying to sound all like perfect or anything like that. But you know, like I can't, I don't have time to be like negative, really. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm really grateful for the pay they give me. I'm really grateful for being able to be a main event on Showtime and, you know, there, there might be some disappointment if things go perfect and things don't go my way, you know, and, uh, you know, but I'm, 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 I'm grateful, man. I got really nothing too much to complain about, to be honest. So, uh, so, you know, there's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed, dude. I'm blessed. So there's really nothing to bitch about, to be honest. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right. Great. Thank you very much. And we'll now move on to Sergio Nunn with USA Today. Yeah, just a couple of uh, housekeeping questions for Scott. I'm wondering, is this a uh, January 7th 
uh, card that's been talked about. Is that official? Is that actually going to happen? Or? Uh, you know, Sergio, right now we don't have anything to announce on that flight card. There's still some details to work out. Uh, so that's still a pending uh, event. Okay. Uh, assuming that is still pending, I'm wondering how you uh, would be able to promote a, uh, a decent card on uh, relatively short notice. Well, you know, that's uh, that's always a challenge, but, you know, um, it's, you know, we, right now we have uh, more people working on Strike Force than we've ever had, and, uh, you know, they have a, a very good machine, and, uh, you know, we're, we're going to, if, if it does happen, you know, we're, we're going to, we're going to go for it, and, uh, and, um, you know, and, and, and promote the heck out of it. So, you know, to me, um, the time frame really, the la- the most important thing for the event really is the last six weeks when you're promoting. So, uh, we still have time if we can get this thing activated. And, uh, <clears throat> the other thing I'm wondering is, uh, if you have an idea yet as to when the final of the heavyweight Grand Prix might take place. Yeah, I'm still, I still, uh, predict that it will happen in the, uh, in the late, part of the first quarter. Uh, so uh, we'd like to get this fight done uh, before the end of the first quarter. So perhaps uh, that sounds like you're talking maybe sometime in March? Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of uh, the month that we're shooting for. Again, we're monitoring uh, Daniel Cormier's uh, recovery uh, from his broken hand. Um, so um, I actually talked to Bob Cook a couple of days ago, and um, you know Daniel's going back to the doctor, I think, uh, sometime in the week. And then you see how the hand's healing up, and, and then, you know, we'll take it on a case, you know, like a week-by-week basis. But that's kind of the target date, Sergio, is uh, in the first quarter and uh, and hopefully in March. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right, great. Thank you very much. And we do have time for one last question, and that'll come from – we'll now go to Richard Hunter with KLLI uh, Radio Dallas. Yes, a uh, question for Cyborg Santos. Uh, Cyborg, you know, uh, there's been a recent war of words between Misha Tate and Ronda Rousey about uh, – uh, Misha is saying that uh, legitimate contenders uh, who have paid their dues should not be leapfrog for title shots in the interest of um, uh, fighters who have a better ability to promote themselves. And Ronda has said that all that really matters is a fighter's ability to sell tickets and market themselves. And your name, of course, has been mentioned in this uh, argument. I wanted to know where you came down on that. Are you a firm believer that uh, fighters pay their dues and, and wait their turn, or do you see Ronda's point that if a fighter can promote themselves that um, they they should be able to uh, jump the line? Você trabalha duro, pode ter a oportunidade de trabalhar como profissional em MMA. Eu sei que a Misha tem, falou com isso, que é uma mulher mais, mais famosa, tem mais... Uh, Misha tem, falou. Tá. Que é, se você tem mais, mais, como dizer, mais oportunidade, se, se é famosa ou se você trabalha duro. Ah, eu acho que na verdade, acho que os dois, né, eu tenho que trabalhar duro, fazer boas lutas, e eu, na real, preciso se mudar de 135 não, porque para eu ter mais luta, hum. não que eu de famosa, porque eu vou continuar mantendo, fazendo boas lutas, eu não venho procurando, eu quero ter, fazer lutas melhores e manter meu assunto não. Uh, well, she's... I didn't understand the question, is, uh, but basically she's saying that it, it works both ways, um... She believes that you can acquire uh, a prestige in the sport by working hard and fighting hard. Um, and her instinct, uh, she's saying that uh, she's moving down to 35 because there's more opportunities to have probably more fights there, but not looking for fame or anything, just wants to put on the best fights that she can to challenge herself, you know. But um, mm-hmm. she says that it could work both ways as far as um, being popular and being a hard fighter. It depends, uh, the, I guess, the luck of the draw, I guess. Could I quickly pose that question to Scott Coker? Scott, I know this isn't a new debate, but obviously with uh, MMA's increasing exposure to media, I think we'll probably see more fighters like Shale Sonnen and like Ronda Rossi. Uh, what do you come down on that as a promoter? Oh, yeah. Are you asking about uh, the same question, uh, a cyborg? Yeah. Or? Same question. Okay. Here, here's how I feel about um, the, the Ronda situation. If you If you look at... Uh, and then MMA fighter, you just can't look at, you know, how many MMA fights they've had. Because 
how many, uh, you know, matches in judo, how many competitive martial arts matches has she had? And uh, when you look at a jiu-jitsu fighter, you know, he might only have five, six, seven fights, but he's had a thousand jiu-jitsu matches. And so, you know, when, you, when you're looking at an MMA fighter, you have to look at the total package. And, um, you know, the level of experience and the, the combat um, skill that uh, Ronda has uh, is far greater than uh, a beginning fighter that's only had two or three fights. She still is young in her career, but, uh, you know, with that Olympic uh, experience and all those matches in judo, uh, it makes her very credible uh, very quickly. And uh, to me, I would have no problem putting that fight together uh, because of all the past experience that she's had in uh, Olympics and in judo. So, you know, I guess my point is is that um, it's not just a media hype. It's, you know, Ron is the real deal. I mean, she beat Julia Budd, who, uh, you know, is a very seasoned fighter, has tremendous uh, skills and tremendous uh, experience. And, uh, you know, and Ronda went in there and did her thing. So, to me, it's, it's really about the skill. And we would never want to put a fighter in there that's overmatched because that's not good for anybody. So, uh, when you talk about Ronda, you know, talk about somebody that, uh, that's deserving and that has a skill to be there, uh, even though the MMA record uh, in cage fights might be limited to the experience, like I said, in Judo Olympics, uh, to me, all adds up to the equation. In the equation. Thank you. All right, great. Well, Chris, that's all the time we have for questions today. I'd like to turn things back over to Mr. Schaller for any additional or closing remarks. Thank you, Abe, and thanks to all the media. 